Hi, welcome to the ProYaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 15, ProYaku Bloggers Meetup. On Saturday, April 6, 2013, the same day that Alex Ramirez became the first foreign player to reach the 2,000-hit milestone, the Tokyo Area ProYaku Bloggers and Press had a get-together at TGI Fridays in Shibuya. We were originally expecting 8 to 10 people, but, as John Gibson says, work sometimes gets in the way of life. Now you know most of the participants only through their written word, so I'd like to introduce them to you visually and with their own voices. In attendance, other than myself, were Garrick De Orio, founder of Tokyo Swallows blog, Kozo Ota, a contributor to the Tokyo Swallows blog, a recent guest of this show, and the man who arranged the evening for us. Deanna Rubin, a blogger of the Seattle Mariners originally, then Nippon Ham Fighters, and the person who has some of the best coverage of Japanese college baseball ever put together. And finally, Jason Koskri, who is a sports reporter for the Japan Times. Now, this is my first attempt at an on-site interview, and the video quality in the dark restaurant has quite a bit to be desired. There also was one segment where the audio got much lower for some reason. Nonetheless, let's hear from the group. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm Garrett Diorio. Um, I'm one of the five bloggers at the Tsubame Gun, TokyoSwallows.com. And we got started in 2008 partly because of Michael Westbay's site, when our own David Watkins was a heavy commenter there and kind of wanted his own outlet. So one day, Christopher Pellegrini, who's also with us, came to me and said, basically, if you build it, he will come. Or, if you build it, he will blog. <laughs> he being Dave Watkins, which was true. So we set up the site. Dave carried the weight for the first couple of months. Then it turned out that there's a lot to do when you're trying to blog about every game that a team plays. <laughs> so Chris and I took over, and a couple of years later, uh, Kozo Ota moved to town and joined us pretty quickly, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Kozo. Kozo. <laughs> And started adding bonus features, like knowing what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or reading and speaking Japanese. Reading and speaking <laughs> Japanese is also a bonus. Um, watching a lot of games, and he had impressive attendance for his first couple of years. And then uh, Scott Cavanaugh joined us last year as well. So there are five of us on a rotation. Um, we set it up kind of on a lark. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised it's lasted this long, but we have managed to... We've, we've blogged every single game we've played. Since the started, and almost all of them uh, on the same day, and almost all of them beating the press report some, because we're only watching one team and one game since six. The, uh, so that's what we do over there. Um, my role is relatively minor compared to the other bloggers now, but but in the past I do the minutiae and the stuff that doesn't have a time limit, mostly because I don't have the attention span of the work ethic for it. But, uh, that's what we do, and I guess the big event in our life is that our, our beloved Section D has recently no longer become ours. 7-Eleven uh, put up upper deck seats, so they've yeah. locked off our seats. So we've, we've become liberated by not showing up really early, showing up whatever, and just sitting wherever. Which it turns out is possible at games that get 10,000 attendants in the 35,000, 36,000 seat stadium. And, and that's where and that's Tokyo Swallows. That's that's what's fun here. And anything to add to that? Not really. Um, I, I think we are probably one of the best organized team oriented sites you know, on the internet because we have the team and it's not just one person. Do we have any competitions? Yeah, well, is there another like five person blog about one well, specific well, team? Pe pe people have tried <laughs> to sort of set up a blog about one team, but it just ultimately does fall apart because you it's a lot of work to do alone. So right, well that's the secret. You can't do it by yourself. It helps if you got five people doing it. So, well, yes. Or you could be Deanna Rubin, and, and you could 
Yeah. <laughs> and you can do not one team, but all of them, and Hi. high school, and college. Have everything, and then you America. burn out and you quit. <laughs> what do you want I, me to say? I do wonder how you have a job. <laughs> well, I mean, when I was here, I mean, I spent like almost all my free time going to baseball games. And not, you know, I mean, I'm basically a fighters fan, but I also like college baseball and high school baseball. And any time I had free time and there was a game going on, I was there. And then at some point I realized I was spending too much time writing about the games I was going to, and I'm not enough time actually going to games. And I think that's actually part of why I stopped writing. And because I moved back to the U.S. and... You know, it's hard to write a Japanese baseball blog when you're not in Japan. At least, like, I mean, yeah, you could, like, read news articles and translate things, but it's not the same as being there and taking photos and sharing the experience, you know, actually being in the sections and the... Well, I've really enjoyed your blogs when uh, you go to games where former uh, college guys and former NBB guys uh, are at. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all over the place. They're like, all over in AAA and... Yeah, I mean, in the U.S., I've caught up with people like Brian Sweeney and Luis Jimenez, who used to play for the fighters. I got to meet Sue Boy. That was really cool. He was playing in the yeah, independent league team in the U.S. And those guys are always astonished in the U.S. that anyone knows who they are, which is awesome. <laughs> but even in Japan, like, um, last year, uh, Takatsu Shingo was managing in Niigata. And I was like, oh, he's retiring. I have to go meet him. And I did, and it was a great experience. Like, and that kind of thing is all over Japan. Like, there's baseball everywhere, no matter where you go here. And I think that's the coolest thing about the country. It's small enough you can go anywhere and find a baseball game. And if you know anything about the sport, and you're just willing to go there and talk to people, you'll just have all these crazy experiences that happen. Like, fans you'll meet, or players you'll meet, or, you know, the shot show where the team comes up and starts trying to talk to you in English. <laughs> or, you know, you go to an international college game and, like, the Fighters GM comes up to you, you know, like, <laughs> it's just the kind of stuff that happens. And that's what I think is so wonderful about the game here is, like, I always tell my friends in the U.S., as you, you get out of it what you put into it. And yes. I put in, like, you know, 120 like, games a year when I was here. And I, yep. I think I definitely true. got that much out of it. After we got our free time. Um, and uh, Jason. Jason Costry. Costry. Is that how you say that? That's how you say that. Costry. Okay. And uh, you've been uh, writing professionally about Japanese baseball, unlike the rest of us. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's what's really special about having access to the players? Well, I think the special thing is you, you get to get a lot of insight on them about you know what you don't have to wonder why did he do this, why did he do that. You know, just go ask him why he did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we do tend to speculate a lot. <laughs> you, know, you, you kind of get, you, you don't know a person, but you can kind of get the, the inner workings of a guy, maybe how he thinks, how he feels about his certain things, and what he likes, and what he doesn't like. Maybe a little bit of him off the field, a little bit. So I think it's you just get to know more of the experience of the player, and know more about the player, and that helps you know why he does this, why he does that. And if you had any advice for us amateurs, what would it be? Probably not better than me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, if you like the amateur, then stop college kids. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems like a good place to stop. But believe me, the conversation went on. Everyone had some great stories to tell about incidents while at games or while covering games. It would have been great to have had recorded the entire three and a half hours of conversation. And we'd have probably gone on much longer, but I kind of needed to get back to Shinagawa before the last train home. The biggest news of this past week was Alex Ramirez reaching the 2,000 hit milestone with a line drive home run over the left field fence at Jingo Kyujo. The home run was his 379th of his Japanese career. Koskri-san in the Japan Times submitted a full report before joining us in Shibuya. And I would uh, recommend going to read that article for the full details. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. I expect to see an article by John Gibson soon, but 
you can bet that John and Jim will be all over the milestone in this week's Japan Baseball Weekly podcast, being released tomorrow morning, April 8th, 2013. The next quarterly Sabre Tokyo meeting will be held on Saturday, April 20th at Shiba no Tori Daiichi Restaurant in Tokyo, starting from 3.30, with talks carrying on through dinner. Isao Chiba, the prolific writer for Shukan Baseball and former head Pacific League statistician, will be giving a 20-30 to 30 minute presentation of his participation in the recently concluded American Spring Training Tour. He's always very fascinating to listen to. I can't wait. And I believe we're also soliciting a second speaker for the evening, but I haven't yet heard of who that will be. And, you know... If you know of any upcoming ProYaku related events, I encourage you to join the ProYaku community on Google Plus and let us know about it there. For example, the next bloggers meeting will be likely held this fall when Newman's son from NPB Tractor is visiting Japan. And with that, I submit to you this week's ProYaku report. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, take care.